Hi, I'm Josh Michaels. And I'm Randy Rupp from Wisconsin Lighting Lab. And today we're going to be talking about harmonic vibrations and vibration dampeners. Harmonics is a phenomenon in the industry that is very unpredictable. Um, through the years we've all determined or um, figured out various poles that are more susceptible to harmonics. Um, it's, it's probably the number one factor for light pole failure. Um, it's also a phenomenon that can't be predicted. And um, it's, it's, it's a very hard to explain to like an owner or a customer, somebody why their light poles are falling down, why they're vibrating. What types of harmonics are out there? Typically the most common uh, harmonic is a, what they call second mode harmonics, where the center of the pole, like I best explain it, if you took a rubber band, stretched it and snapped it, and it would bounce back and forth, that's what a, uh, a second mode harmonic would do. Um, it is the most popular by far. I've been in the industry 36 years. Um, I've only experienced first mode one time, and that was actually very recent. And what happens to the pole if, uh if you have harmonic vibrations happening in the field and something isn't done to remedy? Uh, harmonics will attack the weakest link. In, in a base welded or a casting is welded to the extrusion, the harmonics will attack the weakest area, which is basically where it was welded, um, which was a high heat zone. And uh, we, we, do, we heat treat after welding, but again, a harmonic will attack and it'll find the weakest part of the pole. Um, I have seen them actually go through hand holes as well. Um, small little holes that are drilled in the pole, um, it'll crack all the way around the pole and, and the pole will fail. We've actually seen uh, vibrations happen at the top of the pole as well on some bracketry, uh, poles that were retrofitted with LEDs. I believe we had some brackets um, that we had discovered that failed a number of years ago. Yeah, that is correct. Um, again, uh, that situation was a retrofit where poles were in the field for a long, long time. The um, the brackets were put on in about 12 months. Um, the tenons were actually breaking and snapping off. And it was a design that we've used many, many times. And uh, that case and what the industry is seeing more and more now is these low profile, small LEDs, you know, they're a half a square foot. And um, there's actually not enough weight, size or ballast there or, or surface area. And it causes the pole to, to just shake more than it typically would. Okay, so that's kind of one of the symptoms um, or that, that the triggering effect, it would be an underloaded pole. Correct. What other kind of scenarios do you see uh, where these site specific areas or things that are done to the pole create harmonics? Yeah, the, the most common area is uh, just wide open, vast areas, farmlands, um, plain states, South Dakota, North Dakota, where there's not a whole lot to break up the wind. Um, what happens is, is the wind will, will catch, um, say, let's talk about a square pole. So aluminum poles are the most susceptible um, because what happens is the wind hits the flat side and it creates a vortex on the back side, which relieves or takes, um, I guess, air pressure off that side. And that's what causes the pole to start shaking back and forth. Um, a round pole, obviously the wind can shape around it much easier and uh, is much less susceptible to the, to the vibrations. But as far as Areas they're in, again, wide open plains, um, big fields, poles at the end of the fields. Uh, we had a, a, a large issue one time on the, uh, the east side of a lake um, with prevailing west winds. And um, those poles actually filled in one month. Okay, uh, similar to poles that are, are installed without fixtures on? Yeah, typically a light pole, and I don't know if a manufacturer out there will not. We all tag our poles with a warning label about putting poles up without fixtures on. A pole needs some type of a ballast at the top of it. Okay, and then you have other areas like uh, airports, parking ramps, uh, piers, decks, uh, any kind of non-standard type of application. Those would require vibration dampers as well. Yeah, absolutely. That's something we ask a question a lot. Now, your airport... Um, there's probably multiple reasons you have harmonic issues there. Again, vast, wide open areas. There's runways, there's no trees, there's very few buildings to break up the wind. Um, you also have the jets constantly taking on and off, creating some additional harmonics. Um, bridges, um, you mentioned, you know, just the shake and the rattle of the bridge uh, on top of parking ramps, you know, things like that. Yep, I know uh, we've talked about two, like even bus stations, train stations, uh, even high traffic areas all that kind of can contribute to harmonics developing at a site. It's really kind of a, a little bit of an unknown, but also a known of, of 
we know these certain areas are prone to these types of things, but yet, you know, across the street could be just fine, but, you know, the other side of the street has these yeah. harmonics. Yeah, there's parking lots, and I've, I've visited I'll probably more parking lots than I care to see to that are harmonic issues. You can have poles in one sector of the parking lot that are shaking constantly, and 90% of the rest of the poles in the lot have zero issue. It's, it's definitely a location um, derived problem. Okay. Now, if we are going to be putting up poles in a prone area or uh, like, like an airport, we require vibration dampeners. At the factory, we can do a factory installed vibration dampener. Uh, so that would be this canister style. It, it contains a, a dead weight that absorbs the harmonics. And this gets installed two thirds of the way up the pole on the inside. Now, in certain circumstances, if the pole diameter is too narrow, uh, we can, or these can also be installed on the outside of the pole as well. It just doesn't look as aesthetically pleasing. If you have poles in the field that don't have vibration dampeners in them and they're showing signs of harmonics, we can do a field installable vibration dampener. Uh, for that, it would look something similar to this, except it would be much longer. It's gonna be two thirds the length of the pole and then it could be installed through the handhole or from the top of the pole down. And this is just a piece of pipe containing some uh, aircraft cable. And that helps to absorb the vibrations. As crazy as these devices look, um, I I've been to the field with, it with this particular dampener probably 20, 25 years ago and uh, with a contractor who was adamant that this was ridiculous and it wasn't gonna work. And uh, this was one of those lots where there was a, just a sector in the lot that poles were shaken and it was a perfect wind condition day. And that's the one thing we haven't touched on, but um, second mode harmonics are typically set up, excuse me, first mode harmonics are typically set up in a uh, constant five to 30 mile an hour wind areas. Um, it's not heavy winds, not high winds. Um, when a pole fails, and the first thing they'll say, we haven't had any high winds at all. It doesn't take high winds. But uh, I took a dampener like this, a pole was shaking in the middle as I was explaining, and uh, put it up through the handhole, sat down, we sat in the, in the contractor's truck, myself, the agent, the contractor, and he was just betting that that pole was gonna start to shake. And I bet we had to stare at it for a half hour. <laughs> and we could see a pole over there shaking like crazy. And when we put the dampener in, didn't have an issue, solved the problem. Are they 100%? No, um, but I would say they're probably 99.9% .9 effective. Okay, and I know we, we touched briefly uh, earlier about LED fixtures and the low profile, um, and those are creating <clears throat> harmonic issues in the field, especially in retrofit applications. Uh, a lot of times to our customers and our reps, uh, anything with an EPA of one or less, we will recommend a vibration dampener and from about 0.75 EPA or under, we require a vibration dampener. And that's just, that's a total uh, EPA loading on the pole. So that's not per fixture. If there's four fixtures, then you would be okay. But if it's just a single uh, fixture application, that's where harmonic vibrations can occur. Especially the, the LED fixtures now, they're, you know, 10 pounds, 15 pounds, 20 pounds, and it's like there's nothing at the top of the pole. Correct. Thank you for watching our video on harmonic vibrations and vibration dampeners. Stay tuned for our next video from Wisconsin Lighting Lab.